The Bible says in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all people, giving them one last chance. While I don't know how close we are to the end of days, I do know that with every sunset, we're that much closer to such a time. The world sometimes is not a pleasant place to live in, 
things seem somehow very much out of control in every aspect, especially with people. Ever notice how awful they are to themselves and others? Some days, it's almost like I can feel humanity winding down. It's weird. And my dragon nightmare seen every night? The Book of Acts mentions that near the end, young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. I feel very old. There will be blood and fire and clouds of smoke, which could more than explain the metaphoric beast that haunts my sleep, devouring a small church. A great many churches these days have become such rotten examples to so many lost people. How do they expect to deliver the truth when they themselves wallow in so much sin under the guise of endless excuses? The dragon is indeed upon a great many of these organizations, burning them up in his flames of deceit. And in the end, it will be too late for so many people. But we all have one hope. There is a purpose in life. There is a way to salvation. If only more people would listen to this truth. How do you tell someone how to get to heaven? without coming across wrong or as a bully? How do you get them to listen? After all, it's the most important thing in this life, isn't it? Because we're all born to die and we need to be sure of where we're going in the next life. My brother is in the hospital. He hasn't come to yet and may die. While I'm not exactly a preacher, I discovered the truth years ago and tried to share it with him. He didn't listen, I don't think. He's in the hospital because of some bad things he did, and I've been visiting him. I hope and pray that I can get to him, somehow, some way. During visiting hours, I just read the Bible to him, some of my favorite stories and passages. I'm hoping he can hear me. I'm praying that I can help save him. Because no matter how hard you try to run from the truth, it's everywhere, right in front of you. In fact, right outside my brother's window is the very symbol he needs to acknowledge. No, I'm not coming home. I've made up my mind. Oh, that's, that's just great, Elise. I get a say in this. Can't we talk about this like adults? Face to face? We've been over this a million times, so it shouldn't come as a surprise to you at all. How many chances do I have to give you? How many years do I have to put up with your cheating and your abuse? You've hurt me too many times. Look, I'm sorry. How many times do I have to say it? As many times as you've screwed up. Forever. What time did you get in last night? Eleven. Liar. I left after midnight. Were you out partying with your secretary last night? I told you that was over. Sure. That's why Janet saw you at the nightclub the other night, when you were supposed to be meeting your lawyer. Okay. Look, so what? I screwed up again. I'm not perfect. That's no reason just to, to, to leave. Franklin! I've been praying about this. It's in God's hands now. God's hands? Oh, you've been talking to that brother of mine again, haven't you? I told you, Elise, I'm not going to conform to to some standards uh, that that are set for me. I'm not going to I'm not going to conform to that. I uh, I read your pamphlets and I read your books. I told you I'm not into that way of thinking. And, and besides, you up and you leave me like a piece of trash. Now that's real Christian of you, Missy. Look. I just wanted to let you know that I left, and that I'm okay. I just need to be alone for a while. Where are you? Where are you? I want to talk to you face to face and show you that you can't do this to me, you thoughtless coward. Let me tell you something, Elise. You, you can't, can't run, run from, me. from me. You can't, you can't hide. hide. I will, I will sniff, sniff you out like a hound, hound dog. dog. Do you, do you understand, understand me? me? Goodbye, Franklin. Elise! Elise! She hung up on me. I can't believe it.
<laughs> Just what I thought. Hiding at mommy's house. No way, Elise. No way. You're not doing this to me. It's till death to his part, babe. Till death to his part. Death. Death is coming your way. <laughs> A road trip. That's the ticket. No one does this to me, Elise. Nobody. It's time to take care of a little business. Hey there. Hi. Where are you headed? To the next town. There's a bus station there. I need to catch a Greyhound. Yeah. I'll hop in. You going to Breckenridge? Yes. All right. Sure live out in the middle of nowhere. No car? Well, you're driving out in the middle of nowhere. Brings you way out here anyway. Yeah, I'm visiting my uh, mother. She lives about six hours up in the mountains. Oh. Still didn't answer my question. What question? Come on, look. All I'm wanting to know is whether you have a car or not. No. My husband took the pickup truck to work. It's the only transportation we have. 
your uh, does your husband know you're heading off to the Greyhound station with a big old suitcase? Not exactly. You're leaving him, ain't you? Look, mister, you just don't understand. I, I mean, I think I just got married way too young. I guess I should have listened to my parents and just not have rushed into this thing. I mean, Ronnie gets drunk all the time and then he gets in these rages and he beats on me and I just can't take it anymore. I've got to get away. I, I just need to get to my mom's where I can think some things through. I just need to be alone for a while. Think some things through. I just need to be alone for a while. Think, think some things, things through. through. I just, just need, need to be alone. I just need to be alone for a while. I just think some things through. I just need to be alone for a while. I just need to be alone for a while. Elise! I'm coming to get ya! <laughs> out for attacks from the devil your great enemy he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for some victims to devour hey we're just out here uh, playing games you know well slick cat daddy little war game activity saw your car parked up there thought you might be into giving a guy a ride Right? Yeah. You hot set of wheels up there. Somewhere to go, living out here. Ain't like you can just fetch a cab. So you can give me a ride or not, Pilgrim. You planning on cutting me? That little butter knife you're harboring. Yeah, sure. I'll give you a ride. Cool beans. Let's hit it. Now I see why they say never take a ride from a stranger. What's your name, stranger? Name's David. Mind if I call you Davy? 
Yeah, you can call me whatever you want, driver. And yours? Franklin. I'll just call you Frankie. What's wrong, Frankie? Is that what the bullies used to call you on the playground? Hey, Frankie. You might want to leave the little lady your suitcase. After all, your war games are over and done. Frankie, you are a true gentleman. And they say chivalry's dead these days. She'll find it. You don't carry any luggage, a uh, backpack? Nothing that ties me to this world, my friend. Just a coat on my back, a hat on my head. So where are you heading, stranger? On down the traveled path. Got to meet up with somebody. I'm only going as far as Madison County. I got to meet my wife and her mother. It's all right, I'll take whatever I can get from you. It's much appreciated. Yeah, look at all those churches and signs. On every street corner. It's amazing, isn't it? What's that? People still don't believe. They don't listen, despite the writing being right there on the wall. People just choose to ignore it. They've hardened their hearts, that's all. So I take it you're some sort of street preacher uh, prophet, huh? Something like that. It just kills me. The truth is right in front of us. So many of us choose to ignore it. Granted, religious sects, they distort the truth a bit. There's so much of the word out there think human nature would drive us to find our own answers, do our own research. Eventually we'd get it. But they don't. They flip by the preachers on the television, mute them out. Preaching comes on the radio, the word or the message, you quickly change the channel. They just won't accept it, Frankie. It's right in front of us. We choose to ignore it and wallow in it own profane existence. I used to be like that. I need a break. Think about it, Frankie. Something as simple as the Red Cross logo. It's all over the world, helping people. You even know what the Red Cross means? Yeah, I don't know. An ambulance. Profound, Frankie. An ambulance. Deep thinker, huh? The Red Cross. Our Savior died on a bloodstained cross. Don't you get the hint of symbolism there? Do you ever think about anything like that? Look, Davey. My wife's a big-time Christian. Big Bible thumper. Her and I... We don't see eye to eye, okay? The way I look at it, every religion is just the same as the other. It's what you believe in that counts. Uh, whether you're Hindu or Christian or Buddhist or whatever that uh, Muslim stuff is. Last I read, there were 10,000 organized religions across the world from uh, 
people worshiping aliens in uh, little tin pyramids to people worshiping these gold idols. So hey, you know, I figure whatever floats your boat. So I tell you what, why don't you pipe down for a minute, drink some poison Kool-Aid, put on your old Nikes, and uh, start waiting for the comet. I'm not buying into it. Frankie, did you know the books of Moses were pinned a full 500 years before even the earliest Hindu scriptures? Moses himself, he wrote Genesis 2,000 years before Muhammad even started the Quran. And time, how many religions have time based on their God? You ever pondered the letters B.C. and A.D.? B.C., that stands for the time before Christ. A.D., after Christ's time here on earth. Time itself, based on Jesus Christ, Christianity's God. I don't know. I guess because Christ was a great guy, they based the calendar on him. Better than Caesar, right? Anyway, everybody knows that Christ was a person, and a great one too. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying that doesn't mean he was supernatural, all right? Uh, supermodels have their own calendars, right? You've noticed, unless your eyes are glued shut, right? How about all the holidays we celebrate? Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all based on Christianity. Wouldn't you say they're a big guy? Well, you know, I don't think a whole lot about them because to me, they're just pretty much commercialism. It's a bunch of parents out there making their kids greedy little brats. And last I checked, Thanksgiving was a holiday where we all sat around a table and ate. It was invented by the pilgrims or something like that, right? Well, actually, Abraham Lincoln initiated Thanksgiving as a way for us to show thanks to God for all we had. Whatever. Nowadays, you've got to be politically correct and tolerant. Everybody has their own beliefs, and, and you have to respect them. And see, that's the American spirit. You ever notice how tolerant the true Christian is when almost everyone uses the Lord's name in vain? Yeah, I guess so. The only reason there's any tolerance for all other religions in this country is because Christianity gave everyone a free choice and isn't forced on anyone. There would be no other religions here if it wasn't for Christianity. Why do you think there's so much flack going on over the Ten Commandments in courthouses? Some people don't want to admit all our laws are based on divine law. All right, all right. I don't need a history lesson here. Next thing you know, you'll be giving me the history of Patton's battle strategies. Whatever you say, man. Frankie, did you realize that most religions are based on what sinful people try to do to get right with God? The Christian Gospels are the good news of what God has already done for sinful man, if he'll listen. Take the Muslim extremists, for instance. They send their sons to their deaths for the cause. The Gospels tell the story of a God who sent his son to death for us. Okay. All right, listen, you're wearing me out. You sound like my brother. Can we just get moving? Like a little frazzled there, Frankie. Been up all night. Heavy load on the old mine there. You might say that. Let's pull over up here. Let me drive. You still got a good five or six hours before you get where you're headed. No. Have it your way. Looks like there's some motels ahead anyway. Why don't you stop up here? Get yourself a little shut eye. You don't mind? Don't mind at all there, Pilgrim. Got all the time in the world. All the time.
torching churches. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me any, given your aversion to the truth. Uh, I didn't even get a shower, did I? How long was I out? Nearly all day. It's already past dinner. Mercy. Oh, it's available. Oh, give me a break. Oh, man, I'm starved. Well, you say we get something to eat before we roll on out of here? I can't believe I slept so long. So you think your wife will be going to heaven after you kill her, Frankie? You did a lot more than dream about dragons, oh, Hoss. You talk in your sleep. Is that so? Mm-hmm. I was just wondering out loud about your wife's eternal status. You know, you were telling me earlier, she's into all that religion, how you're not, since you're planning on committing murder. Say, is that why you won't listen to one single biblical thing I have to say to you? Because you're choosing to become a cold-blooded killer? Oh, and Frankie, I had a glance inside your suitcase there. Found your little financial ledger. So you're one of those accountants that likes to smooth out the earnings quarter to quarter. Must be some sweet perks and bonuses when you make it look good for the big dogs. <laughs> By the looks of those official papers in there, may have caught up with you. Big time legal problems from fudging the books, Frankie? But you wouldn't kill your wife over that, would you? So if you don't mind me asking, why are you going to kill her? Who sent you here? What do you want? Oh, I'm nothing but a poor sinner. Just trusting in Christ for my salvation. Just more than a little curious about you, that's all. Yeah, sure. You're probably some private investigator hired by Elise to follow me around for the divorce proceedings, aren't you? Yeah, if you must know, I have been cheating on my wife, Elise, for about a year now with my secretary, Rhonda. Yeah, I wanted the best of both worlds. That's true. But I guess it just wasn't meant to be. And all this comes crumbling down around me. What am I supposed to do? Elise is going to leave me. I can't have that. I decided it was time to end it all, for both of us, forever. Nobody leaves me. Nobody. I decided that when my father left my mother when I was ten. If you go through with this, where do you think you'll end up when you die, Pilgrim? Like the smell of sulfur? Burning forever? without ever being consumed, the eternal weeping of loss, the gnashing of teeth. Well, I guess you hadn't thought that far ahead. Now have you, old hoss cat. You know, I read where Jeffrey Dahmer, he accepted Christ while he was in prison. And even though he had done some of the most heinous things imagined, if he was sincere in his decision, could be in heaven right now. Well, if you were some kind of prophet, you sure didn't see that coming, did you?
Frankie. <laughs> Ever hear the sounds of nature, Frankie? Ever take the time to stop and look around you at what's in the world? There's no way the Creator can be denied. Do you see it? Are you truly in awe of it like me? The majestic trees? The rolling valleys? You ever tried to lasso a tornado, Frankie? Capture a hurricane in a bottle? I find the wind itself absolutely amazing, Frankie. How you can hear it, I can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. Who else but the healer would have done all this for us, Frankie? Got to be kidding me! This is this is this is not happening.
<laughs> gotcha. <laughs> This is not possible. This is not possible. Nothing like trying to kill the messenger for the message there, old hoss cat. Man, now that hurt. Have you washed your robe in the blood of the Lamb and made it white? The blood of Jesus, God's Son, He cleanses us all. It's not too late, Frankie. It's so simple, Frankie. All it takes is a little childlike faith. Why do you keep resisting when your resistance is nothing more than the spice of my life? You're some kind of demon. 
You're the one who let the demons in your heart, Frankie. They were pushing you to kill that hitchhiker. And now your wife. Demons are nothing more than fallen angels. who fill your mind with lies and hatred. I'm not a fallen angel. I'm a plague, Frankie. A plague of reason. I don't know what or who you are, but your time here with me is about finished. You see, I'm going to heat things up a little bit around here, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. You got anything to say about that, slick cat daddy? God forgive you, because you don't know what you're doing.
fire can kill you, can't it? No. I have no fear. It's not gonna stop me from trying to get through to you before you kill your wife. But ultimately, the choice will be up to you. Your eyes tell me differently, Davy. Your eyes tell me. By the time I'm done with you, you'll be nothing more than burnt, crispy ashes, blowing in God's wind like fall leaves. <laughs> now, you might be able to do a lot of things, but as far as I can remember, fire kills any life form. Even the devil, if I remember my book of revelations correctly, was defeated in a lake of fire. It's not too late, Frankie. You've done some horrible things, yeah. But you haven't crossed the permanent line yet. You need to stop what you're doing and consider things. Consider what? Consider the Sermon on the Mount. So, you've committed adultery. Every other person in the world has too. Whomsoever has lusted in his heart has committed adultery. You're some piece of work, aren't you? Well, everybody's a cheating louse now, huh? Yeah, how comforting. Sure. Won't you go tell that to the old ladies who give endlessly to the TV preachers and see if they don't go bankrupt? Let's take it a little further. Thou shall not kill. And Jesus said, anger in the heart. It's the same as murder. So now everyone's a murderer. Oh man, you're some kind of special crazy. It's a good thing you don't have a congregation. They'd have run you out of town by now. No one wants to hear that! It's not about what you want to hear. The Ten Commandments were written to show we're all sinners. We've all sinned. We've all broken them. One time or the other and one way or the other. Yeah, well, it's obvious to me that anybody can be a sicko. Even the clergy and the churches. Look at some of the twisted things they do. That's a fine example to set, isn't it, Davy? The fallen clergy and all the problems with the church that get all the bad press, they're no example for you, Frankie. Stop looking at others to see what you should be getting away with. Always look to God, because he's perfect. Denominations and rituals, that won't save you. Only a true belief will. Even our most righteous deeds are nothing more than filthy rags in the eyes of God. Davy, I've heard this a thousand times. Now we're getting somewhere. Because you can hear it, and hear it, and hear it, and it'll make no difference at all until you accept it, stop running from it, and change your heart. Stop thinking about yourself so much, Frankie! Poor little you. Never had anything good, did you? Middle class family that loved you. Always a roof over the head. Always food on the table. Sure, one member of the family bailed. The old man was an alcoholic. But your dad never stopped loving you, Frankie. Sins of the father do follow the son. But only if you choose the same path. Oh, Frankie, you had a religious upbringing. Then you saw how the real world is. You thought morality was just something to keep real movers and shakers down. Then in college, you drank, had sex, cheated. Enough already! You blamed it on your father at first, your bad decisions, never wanting to take responsibility for yourself. So you did what you wanted, and you made it. Shut out what was right and wrong. Those emotions we're born with, God gives to us. And you married a beautiful, sweet, and innocent young girl. She reminded you a lot of your mother, didn't she, Frankie? She believed in God. She gave you the benefit of the doubt time and time again. You got bored frustrated. How much was enough, Frankie? Nothing was ever enough. One dollar more, one sexual conquest more, nothing but a low-down, two-timing dog.
How about work, Frankie? You've lied, you cheated, you've doctored books, all to make yourself look better. And that secretary, you know she's only after one thing, and that's money. But it's never enough, is it? She always Would you just leave money. me alone? Back off! It's only a matter of time, Frankie, before the law caught up with those crazy accounting tactics you were pulling. And the wife, well, she's sick of the cheating, the lying, you never being around. So she wanted out. So what are you going to do now? Kill her, kill yourself, all because things didn't work out like you planned. Frankie, I know you didn't expect to be reminded of all this. There's a way out. All you have to do is make Just a change. Back off, please. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is God in human form. Part of God became a human being named Jesus Christ. Lived like us, was tempted like us, but never sinned. He talked with us. He told us directly how to live and act. And it was all recorded in the New Testament. And do you know how Jesus was rewarded for his perfection? The creator of this universe, in human form, was marched out to a hill where he was slowly crucified for all to see. Jesus took our place on that cross. That should be us up there dying. He died to death we should all have, took the punishment we all deserve. He took the pain of every sin that anyone ever commits on that cross. The sacrificial blood of Jesus is a symbol of the transfer of guilt from the sinner to him for those who believe. And three days later, when he was resurrected from the dead, he showed that belief in him would truly result in everlasting life. That's as simple as I can make it. Your brother tried to tell you, your mother tried to tell you, and your wife tried to tell you. Blessed are those who haven't seen Jesus, but believe based on faith and the facts. All it takes is childlike faith, Frankie. Admit you're a sinner. Ask for forgiveness for what you've done. Believe in what Jesus did for you and put it on him. Ask him to come into your heart. I can't. I just... I just can't. All right, then. Do what you have to do. Good, Frankie.
It's in God's hands now. You will never change. We won't declare this. It'll add to the illusion of prophets. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Oh, you're so much better than what I got at home. Forgive them. They know not what they do. Jesus took our place on that cross. That should be us up there dying. This is for your sins, Franklin. Because I love you. Break through the barrier of your deceit, Frankie. Only God has the power to save and transform your angry, arrogant heart. You know I speak the truth, Frankie. Can't you feel eternity? God plants it in the human heart. No one wants to die, Frankie. Instinctively, we know we'll go on. Can't you feel that spirit in that deteriorating vessel you call body? Spirit lasts forever. Where it spends eternity is entirely up to you. Why can't I stop you? You can't stop me because I'm you! We're the same, Frankie. You could shoot me, stab me, catch me on fire. I'll never go away no matter what you do. I'm your conscience! Everything that I've said has come from your mind. 
What? Don't you even recognize yourself? Franklin, David, McDowell, Davy, me is a part of you. Your middle name to be exact. You never really wanted to do that murder thing, Frankie. God gives us so much evidence of himself, and that's incredible. He gives us so many chances. Two of the biggest things speak directly to us. It's around us in nature and our conscience. The ability to feel right from wrong. No. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Frankie, who else but you could have deliberately ditched all the weapons you packed before you even got here. Watch out for attacks from the devil. Watch out Your for great enemy. From the devil. Watch out he for prowls around like a roaring lion looking for some victims to devour. So where are you heading, stranger? On down the travel path. Gotta meet up with somebody. On down the travel path. Gotta meet up with somebody. One more. Do what you have to do. 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 Frankie, you do not want to do this. You want to make a change right now. I mean, you can still make the choice. Shut me out of your life. I'll go away. But you know I'll be back. And after the trial, and you're sitting on death row, I'll show up, and I'll still be whispering to you over and over. There won't be anywhere you can run. Not when you're trapped in a three-by-five-foot cell. All right! All right. I understand now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. How Stand in unease as Jesus sweats blood in the garden of Gethsemane before his death. Cry in revulsion as he's tortured, scorned, whipped, with a crown of thorns on his head. Shed tears for him as he's forced to carry his own cross to the hill of skulls for his own crucifixion. Feel the pain. Feel the revulsion. Stand in awe of his sacrifice as he died in agony for you. Because he wants you to spend the rest of your life with God in peace and harmony. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You gotta meet up with somebody. I won't run anymore. And it's finished, Pilgrim. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so sorry. Please come into my heart. I've done so much wrong. Change. I want to The Bible says that in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit on all people, giving them one last chance. We all have one hope. There is a purpose in life. There is a way to salvation. If only more people would listen to this truth. My brother is in the hospital. 
He came around today and the doctors say he'll make a full recovery. But the important thing is that he accepted Christ as his savior today. Mentally, there's no telling what he had to go through to finally believe what we have all been telling him for years and years now. He's done some bad things and he'll probably have to answer to some of these things. There's no telling if his wife will take him back, but there's a chance. Elise seemed very concerned for Franklin when she found him collapsed in her mother's front yard some time ago, smelling like gasoline with an unloaded gun in a suitcase. But he ended up having a mild heart attack right there on the front lawn, stayed in a coma for the longest time. I think God was giving him plenty of extra time to make his decision. I think Franklin's change is for real. He made the right choice, a choice so many put off or ignore until it is far, far too late. I thank God that he found the truth because the mighty powers of darkness in this world will always be there trying to dissuade us from that truth. Our sports heroes, politicians, celebrities, and even many religious leaders are not giving us the example we need, like the Pharisees of the New Testament. Many are hypocrites. But Jesus is everywhere, standing at the door, knocking, ready and willing to change lives. If only more people would at least open the door a crack and let just a little light in, they would find out for themselves what it means to have a truth, hope, and conviction that transcends death itself. Because the dragon is still out there, burning up the truth in his flames of deceit. That dragon is Satan, whose powers are so great, he is called the ruler of this world and God of this age. But there is a better way, a much higher authority, a savior who died for us so we could live again. We have one choice to make. We're either for Jesus or against him. Where do you stand today?